two, one. Uh, that was Lauren Hill, do wop that thing. So many of us on our cars, our rear view mirrors will say things like, objects uh, may be closer than they appear. What it is, is a cautionary tale for you to look and to make sure that what you're seeing is actually there, that it actually exists. Because uh, turning or moving uh, and believing something is different can cause harm to you or to somebody else. So it is, is a caution. It is uh, telling us to watch and to make sure that what we're seeing and what we're responding to is actually there. Objects may be closer than they appear. Uh, it is like that with social media. Um, social, is ba social media is based on your alg algorithm. So whatever you want to see or whatever you've shown an interest in, it feeds you a steady diet of it. Uh, if uh, you know how many times have you been talking about something and then it pops up on your phone or when you get in your car your phone says do you want to go here because it listens all the time and feeds you a steady diet of what it is you want so a lot of times when you're looking at your social media feed it could seem like the rest of the world because it's very evocative it just responds to you it gives you what a steady diet of what it is you believe so you have your very own echo chamber where everything is as you say it is. But that does not necessarily make it true. Much like those review mirrors that tell us uh, that things may be closer than we, they appear, that things may be not quite as we see them, social media has to have that kind of uh, uh, default position too. So uh, case in point, there was a big to-do on social media about the Cheesecake Factory. There a lot of women thought that it was beneath them. A lot of women put it on a list and talked about how it was, uh, you know, uh, you know, a poor place to go on a date, that it was beneath them. But the reality is quite different. Social media looks at it one way. Uh, the reality of that situation, even that situation is different. Like uh, in, in the restaurant world, uh, in, in, the, in that kind of demographic, uh, the Cheesecake Factory is the jewel of that, of the, re of the, of that demographic. It's the jewel of it. The Cheesecake Factory screams status and opulence. It screams it. As a matter of fact, from its very beginnings, the Cheesecake Factory started in Beverly Hills, California. The cheesecakes are so sourced in Calabasas, California. As a matter of fact, you know, the people on social media uh, forwarding this notion that it's kind of beneath a lot of people, it's kind of below a status symbol, uh, don't really know the reality of it. The reality of it is that it is the 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 thing that decides if a mall is going to be successful is the presence of a cheesecake factory. If a cheesecake factory is in a mall, 93% of the tenants pay their rent on time. As a matter of fact, uh, you can't go to a cheesecake factory on a Friday or a work day, even on a, it, it, for lunch, and get in because that's how it is. 90, 93% of people, of, of tenants, in a place where the cheesecake factory is lo located, pay their rent 93% uh, of the time on time. As a matter of fact, people fight to be them. The Nordstroms, the, the, the Neiman Marcus and the Sachs fight to be in close proximity to the Cheesecake Factory. It is a marvel of that industry. Uh, it, it, is, it is conceived in Beverly Hills. The cheesecakes are sourced in Calabasas. The largest cheesecake factory in the world is in Dubai. So Dubai paid for the Cheesecake Factory. Isn't it something how if you listen to people on social media, you would think it was a slum. It was a, it was the equivalent of a dollar general. It isn't. Isn't it funny how it ain't good enough for Nisi, but it is good enough for Nordstrom's? It ain't good enough for Shantae, but it's good enough for Saks. That is what we, we're looking at. That is the thing. We look at things that aren't true. We make our decisions based on things because they if, because our algorithms, our echo chamber tells us what to believe. And a lot of things happen as a result of that. How many people are in jail right now because they believe what Donald Trump told them? They believe that the election was stolen. And their, uh, their algorithms and their echo chambers told them the same thing. And a thousand people with more counting are in jail, including the very guy who told you the election was stolen. And all of the lawyers associated with it. How many people have lost their freedoms or profession or at risk of losing it because they believe what they saw on social media? How many people right now are dead because they believe what they saw on social media? How many people didn't take the vaccine or take precautionary measure, didn't believe in masks, and now people are dead because you decided to believe somebody or something you heard on social media? 
These other things, because social media gives you what it is you say you want. When I look at my social media page, all I see is half-naked women and golf swing. Now, I don't click on them. That's just what it gives me. It is what I look at, and it gives me a steady diet of it. Imagine basing my decisions on what things look like to me based on my own echo, echo chamber. Isn't it funny how the very people who are too good for a diet of cheesecake, won't consume che cheesecake, have no problem consuming bullshit. That's a little note from the GED section. Got the jazz report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.